Okay, good evening everybody. It is Sunday, the 2nd of October, 2016, and this is our weekly leaders get together, our weekly team Zoom. And as you all know, sometimes we have a bit of a chat about how things are going, do a bit of leadership coaching, and sometimes we have guest speakers on. And tonight we have a fabulous guest speaker in the wonderful brand new mummy, absolutely gorgeous regional vice president and top Am I, am I right? Top central sponsoring area, is that right? It, uh, top, oh, um, yeah, yeah, it was organisational volume growth. Okay, that, <laughs> Emma, <laughs> Emma's absolutely beautiful in every single way. Emma is in the Theresa Buchanan um, success line. So Emma's also like us building her business with being in the international nation. So she doesn't have a nation in the UK. So we work quite closely together as the rest of us all do in international nation. And she's just absolutely amazing at bonusing, at sponsoring. She's really, one thing about Emma, she's really good at being personally accountable. Like everything that she expects a team to do, she does. And I just think that's fabulous. Like her PQV is always high. She's always doing everything that she expects her team to be doing, which is great. She definitely doesn't take that management role. She's all about getting in there on the field. And I just think that we're really lucky tonight to have Emma train us on everything that she is fantastic at, because what she's fantastic at is absolutely exceptional. She should have been training at AAP and she will be one day and GTC because she is brilliant, absolutely amazing. So thank you so much, Emma, for your time tonight. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, beautiful. Oh, thank you for a lovely introduction, Danny. I was totally buzzing when you said, will you, will you train my team? Uh, and I've just, I've put this together and there's a bit of what's and all going to be going on tonight. So I am going to tell you about my whole journey. Uh, so I am going to get into a bit, first of all, as, as we often do, about myself, just to be um, so for those of you who I'm yet to meet, I know there are a few of you on this call, um, I'm Emma Edgar and a regional vice president with Arbon. and wow, I have been with Arbon now for seven years, so I'm going to kind of cast you right back to when I began and let you know a little bit about what it was like back then and, and the things that I was doing uh, and also the things that I wasn't doing. Uh, and I'm, then I'm going to get into my training. So Danny uh, specified to really get into a bit of leadership stuff with you tonight. And I just think it's such a great topic because as we all are, budding and, and leaders and, you know, getting out there and, and building on our leadership all the time. And, you know, really, I think my journey is, is a good one to talk about that because I just, in the beginning, have not, like a lot of us do, just didn't really embrace everything that we're, um, well, fully that I'm doing now. And I just want to really highlight uh, what a lot of you are possibly feeling at the moment, going through at the moment. I think your district's going for areas. Some of you are area managers. That's right, isn't it? Uh, so, you know, obviously I know exactly where where you guys are. And I just want to, if I can give you a bit of insight into how to get to that next level through what I've done, uh, then, you know, fantastic. So I really hope it, it touches all of you tonight. So like I say, seven years now I've been in this business and back in August 2009, I was actually introduced through my cousin. Her daughter had really bad eczema and it was the ABC products that she'd used that had worked three days and it had cleared up all this girl's eczema she'd had for 11 years. So anyway, blown away, um, she decided she was going to become a consultant and, uh, and me and my mum hosted a couple of parties for her. So that is exactly how I came into the business through the products, uh, didn't know the first thing about business, was asked to do the business quite a few times through my cousin because she knew I had good networks and a lot of my friends were into products and things and uh, it was something that, although I liked the sound of it, uh, earning some extra money being the it, uh, I really couldn't see how I could do it because back then I was a full-time medical secretary, so working a lot of hours uh, for not a great lot of money um, but anyway, it did me, it paid my bills. Uh, at the time, I had my mortgage that I've got now and um, didn't have any pets then, but there was just me. So I was living just me on my own um, and living quite a, quite a, let's say, quite a party lifestyle, to put it mildly. So really my, um, what's, what's the word, my priorities back then were really to do my nine to five, or often it was a few more hours than that, Monday to Friday, and have the whole weekend off to spend all my wages partying it up at the weekend. So that was really my, my priority. So when somebody mentioned to me about doing this as a business, 
I was a bit, gosh, well, I've got no money to invest into a business and I certainly haven't got any time because I work 40, sometimes 50 hours a week uh, at this place. And, you know, when I look back now, I pretty much was chained to the desk at that hospital and, um, you know, just doing all the jobs that other people didn't want to do. The thought of actually going back now to that really does, it does, I said to Gareth the other night, Gareth's my other half, it really does scare me. Because obviously, Dan, Danny's mentioned that I'm a new mum. So Eden is now just over two weeks old, so 15 days old. And uh, she just, as all of you parents will know, completely changed our lives. And she was born on my birthday as well. <laughs> she was. I waited. <laughs> so, you know, she's, as you'll know, completely life-changing. And just the fact that, you know, this whole journey I'm going to tell you about and all this stuff I'm going to recommend that you implement is exactly what I've done and I'm in this position now where not having to go back to work for somebody else it's such a blessing the thought of it really does like I said it's quite frightening so when I was asked to do this I didn't know any of that I didn't know what album was I didn't know network marketing I didn't have a clue about where it could get me I really thought it was a door-to-door -door business and admittedly in the beginning when I finally caved in let's say and decided to upgrade because I was a PC um, I, I did treat it very much like a door-to-door -door business with catalogs and, uh, and you know, building up clients that way. And, and to be honest, I still have clients that come and, and they say, Emma, have you got a catalog? And, you know, can you order me this? Can you order me that? I have a lot of people who do that. And that is something I'm going to cover with you as well. I just looked after these people for years on end and they're continually buying through me. They just don't want to buy it themselves online, which is absolutely fine. So don't ever worry if, uh, you know, sometimes you hear, or, you know, we don't want to be doing that. Everyone does their own orders online. Not everybody does, I think, as a lot of us know. So, yeah, so I gave in, upgraded, jumped in, decided that I was going to be a, an Arbonne consultant and just learn along the way, as we all do. But, you know, it was three years into my business before I really embraced any kind of personal development. And that really was reflective in my paycheck. Um, I was a district manager for three years. and you know, I, even though I, I was getting quite a good check as a district manager, which I saw as it was because I was still working full time, you know, it was it was one of those where it was quite it was a stable income because I had those people who regularly ordered off me every month and who would come to me for orders, as well as having people who were doing their own orders online. So like Danny mentioned, my PQV is always high and that's because every year consistently I'm getting or every month new preferred clients in and new clients. Uh, from doing the workshops and things so so you know it's, I've always had a, a good income from Arbonne because of that 15% override that we get and the 35% retail sales so I actually pulled up Teresa asked me not too long ago if I would let her know my Arbonne timeline so I'm just going to run through that really briefly with you now and um, I know we're recording but I, I have got some of my um, my paychecks in there actually and I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it because I don't mind sharing them so uh so I said to Teresa, so I've included my paychecks. I think it shows good growth, but uh, you don't have to share if you don't want. I'm happy either way. So I signed as a PC in August 2009. I actually had 1,069 QV. I reckon that's from those two parties that I did. Um, I recall having two parties from my cousin and I got the offer that was on. Now in September, I upgraded to consultant. My first paycheck, one pence. <laughs> I don't know what happened, <laughs> but it was one pence. Um, my second check in October, £102. So we're, we're kind of looking at something better here now. And uh, my third check down slightly to £90.68. So I actually went district manager December the 1st, 2009. And my first paycheck was £139.50. So like I say, I was a district manager for three years, let's say left for um, September 2011, earning on average 400 to 500 pounds from Arbonne. So I decided to go part time at that point. My parents own a shop, a card and gift shop. So I was loving Arbonne. And at the time I was actually seeing a guy from London and he was in a band. And they were touring everywhere. And me being the party girl that I was, was on all these tours with them, but I still had my Arbonne business going on. So I was kind of living between London and between Carlisle, as well as going all over the place with, uh, with this band. So obviously, priorities still not Arbonne at this stage. 
So this is 2011 coming up 2012. So kind of like three years in, I'm still dilly dallying on with it and not doing a great lot, even though learning a massive amount about the business um, and about Arbonne, but still not really doing any work on myself. So like we say, we always talk about personal development. I hadn't even kicked it in yet. So in August 2012, my last check as a district manager was £681. So I was actually a DM for two years, eight months I've got here. Uh, and then area manager, September 2012. And uh, I was there for three years, five months. And my last paycheck was actually fantastic, £2,875 as an area manager. That was, you know, brilliant. For me, that was life-changing money because I'd never earned much more than £1,000 a month myself in the job I was in. Um, you know, even though I was doing stacks more work and I was worth so much more, that was what I was used to. So I can see because I didn't do any personal development, I just expected the same thing all the time. You know, so, so that's something else why you need to get into the personal development. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that was three years, five months. And then we became a region in February, just gone. And like I say, I know you guys are all striving to get there and, and to your next level. And it just is like you'll hear from lots of people. I still pinch myself every day when I get into that car, just the feeling, you know, and, and just the way it changes things within your team is phenomenal. So, um, so there we go. So like I said to Teresa, what a journey. So in my seven years with Arbonne, my income's grown like 4,000 uh, 4, pounds, which is absolutely incredible, um, you know, because it's gone from that to, to that. So absolutely brilliant. I wanted to share that with you because I don't keep much to myself. <laughs> so let's get into some leadership training. So I know at the end you might have some questions. So if you're taking notes, great. I have actually put this into a, um, a presentation. I'm just going to pull it up. It's a lot of writing, so don't worry about seeing this. Can you see it? My blue slideshow. Hopefully that's come on. Yeah. Yeah, great. So leading leadership and leading a team, if there's any typos, it doesn't matter. I used to be a secretary. That doesn't matter. Uh, so definition of leadership, according to the idea um, of transformational leadership, an effective leader is a person who does the following, creates an inspiring vision of the future, motivates and inspires people to engage with that vision. So we hear it all the time, don't we? Cast the vision, have a vision, you know, look to the future, work on the now, motivate, inspire people. And that is exactly what we're doing in Arbonne. So like I say, my third year into Arbonne when I became an area manager was my first real time, apart from reading the odd book here and there. And don't get me wrong, I was at every single nation training going uh, and I was at DAs and I was actually going up to Glasgow once a month in the early days from Carlisle, which is just over an hour's drive. That was the kind of, that was the only training that was going on here because our upline, Teresa, was still living in the States at the time. So, you know, I know, you know, we can kind of relate to it, can't we? Because uh, un un unless Fiona is, well, until Fiona goes nation this month, we, they're all overseas, aren't they? So we're kind of plugging into other um, nations things that are going on in, in the UK. Well, there was, there was my region. She was an area manager at the time. She was in the States. So it was so, there was just no training going on seven years ago. I know... Fiona will relate to that as well, even in some of the, the, the UK nations. So let me just plug into here. I'm hoping it'll change. Yeah. So my first real thing for you tonight in leadership is be you. So all the way through my Arbonne journey, I've made sure that, you know, I've seen a lot of people come and go through the business, let's say. And sometimes I've related to a lot of people and other people I haven't related to. And I believe it is down to the fact that people just aren't the genuinely being themselves. And I think the real reason I've had um, so much success in this business and the reason everybody around us has is because we continue to be ourselves and be genuine. It's so easy to get caught up in other stuff that's going on and trying to be like her, trying to be like him, you know, but people actually join you, um, which is something to really always remember and just be really genuine and, and authentic and, and be vulnerable you know, we are, I mean, I'm coming on here tonight and I've done loads of presentations, but you still feel vulnerable and it's great. We're just 
humans and it's really good to feel like that I bet you you know getting up on that big stage and talking we all are going to feel a bit vulnerable and a bit shy and a bit oh god what if I get it wrong that's fine you know we learn from all of that so I think people like to see that in you um another thing that I will encourage you to do is tell your story so like I've just done then I've just gone through some numbers and some paychecks with you and some people might think well you know I, I wouldn't do that but hey that's me and I do so you know if it's not you then don't but if it is then do it so absolutely 100% what's and all tell your story and um, you know we, we go we went to a leadership academy not long ago and um, one of the tra- I think it was Yvonne Dixon uh, got up on the stage and she was on about like signing up her dog as a preferred client or something <laughs> <laughs> don't go and do that but you know it was it was on the stage in front of everybody and she's admitted and hands up you know I've done some things wrong in the past but hey we accept it we admit it we move on and we learn from it so people will relate to you more if you're really genuine and telling your own story and like I said they're putting your own spin on it that that DA is the same slides for everybody but when you go out there and do it yourself you know just make sure that you're getting your own spin I always think relating back to your own journey when you're talking through that DA with people is what engages people the most. The slides are great to keep us on track, but always like bring in bits about yourself and your own journey that will really engage with people and let them, you know, really relate to you. Let go of any feelings of, of inferiority. I don't know if I've said that right, but wow, I have had this so much and I've actually you know, really worked on myself with this. Being in the business for so long, you know, you would see, like, back in the day, I would go to trainings in Glasgow and you'd have Caroline McFarlane up there and, you know, she's done it in in such and such a time frame and, uh, you know, you can begin to feel a bit inferior sometimes. I know I have and I've let that get in the way for such a long time. Once when I went to a training in, um, I think it was Coventry with Dr Rowe, I actually, that was my turning point because he was up there doing his training, but that training day was specifically for area managers only. And we had, I think there was six NVPs at the time in that room and I was sat next to Melanie Dean. For those of you who've met and know Melanie, she's absolutely beautiful, lovely person. But I just felt like I was sat next to her with one of my area managers and we looked at each other and we thought, what are we doing here? You know, it was it was so strange, but it was such a light bulb moment because I felt as though I almost didn't deserve to be in that room. And I know that a lot of you will have feelings of that going on because it is a natural thing, but we can really just blast past that and do whatever you can to really work on that and know that we're all the same and all those NVPs and RVPs, you know, have, have been exactly where you are and had to work a lot on their selves and their feelings to get like past that hurdle as well. But it is very easy because I think a lot of you with me coming from a background of, of not earning much money myself, coming from a family that, you know, was didn't bring in a great lot of, of money and money was the root of all evil and all this sort of stuff that a lot of us are told when we're younger. Um, you know, I think it, 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 it was big for me being in that room then, but it was the biggest thing I needed to learn was it was what I needed to get over. So really let go of those feelings and take in some coaching uh, that's going to help with that and to improve your skills in leadership. And this can be external coaching or it can be within our bond just making sure that you're doing that personal development that is always recommended to you through your your uplines and, and sidelines um, and like I'm saying there don't go with the crowd it's very easy to do that but just really be that individual and, and a person of your word you know, your team will respect you so much more for it if you say you're going to do something carry it out and just really be that person of trust um, and like I've put on there, when you're, you're doing your, your monthly uh, thank yous and shout outs and um, recognition and things like that, just be careful when sharing numbers. And, you know, sometimes a lot of people are a lot more sensitive than others and just understand that you've got to this level where you are now. And, you know, your team are, are watching you and duplicating and doing everything that you're doing. So just just be careful with sharing any numbers and letting anybody um, feel a bit inferior let's say or anybody feeling like as if they you know haven't maintained this month and that shows on that board because I know I've done it before so just just keep all that to, to yourself um, so my next 
thing is be at everything. And I know you will have heard this before, but I'm speaking from true, um, from the heart here. Uh, what These are all things that I've overcome and that I am doing and I have implemented to get where I am now. So you have to be the example and like we always hear, don't expect your team to do what you're not doing. I look back at my Arbonne journey and there's only a couple of things that I've missed. I've never missed a GTC. So when I first started, I only had two months as a consultant who was who was doing a little lipstick business, actually. And, you know, I really, I, Teresa said, you've got to come to GTC. I, they did an incentive and I'd earned it over the two months, the three nights stay at the MGM and the conference fee. And, uh, you know, she says, you've got to come. So I went, it was only myself and Teresa went along to it. But every single year I've been to that. So be at all of those because they are crucial to moving forward in your business. And obviously the AACs as well, you know, that is something that you want to be at because once you're there, your team obviously are going to follow. And the things that you pick up and that you learn there, you know, you're learning from the best, the cream of the crop in this business, and, and it's coming firsthand from them. So, like I said, be at everything. I can remember missing, um, it was an event up in Glasgow, and I actually had about five of my team going up there. But back in the day, when my priorities weren't right, I'd been out the night before and uh, just couldn't get out of bed. And hey-ho, you know, nobody, nobody shoot me or anything like that. But these are things, we're, we're only human. But, you know, it didn't really do me any favours because it became a joke. And, you know, for a couple of years, a couple of the team would say, oh, God, is she going to make it to this one? And, you know, so I just wasn't taking my business really serious enough, even though I'd be a district manager at the time. Um, you know, it was, it was a big, big thing for me, that, because I learned from it. And, you know, as the years have gone on, my partying slowed down. And uh, it was actually AAC September last year. Nicola Wills was on stage and she mentioned that to get from area to region, she'd, uh, she'd actually quit drinking altogether. And it just, alarm bells went in my head. And I thought, right, that's it. I need to stop drinking. I need that. I'm with Gareth. We're, we're having a great time. Um, he doesn't drink a lot, but when I do, I just go totally off track for like two or three days and things slow down in my business. So that was it. That was my light bulb moment from attending AAC. So I would highly recommend getting to everything that you can, including your, your nation and region trainings, because you just don't know who's going to say that aha thing. And look at Nicola Wills a year on. She's a nation. So it's absolutely incredible. And, and actually, my results from implementing that uh, were big massive as well because I went there as an area manager for the third year running and had all my lovely team there with me all ready to sh move and shift as well but from making that decision by hearing Nicola say those words on stage and her very real great story that she told that I related to so much um, within September October November December Jan within four months I found out that I was pregnant with Eden and within January, February, six months, I was a region. And that was all from, I reckon, hearing her, realising the icing on the cake was stop having blurred vision after your night's out and just hold back from it. And honestly, it really worked. So sometimes it can be a big thing like that that happens to you at these meetings. And I've put at the bottom, I think it's right, but not everyone at the meeting drives a white Mercedes, but everyone who drives a white Mercedes is at the meeting. I'm sure that's right. Danny's nodding. Yeah, thumbs up. So it is totally true. I heard that from Cecilia Stoll at a GTC many moons ago. And it's true. You know, we, we can't, we don't miss anything. And that's exactly why, unless it's a very, very good reason, um, because we know the value of these meetings. So just drive that forward. I know a lot of you will be doing that already, but making sure that your team hear it on a, all the time, really. We want them to just follow in our footsteps and be at everything. So some tips for being the best consultant on your team. So always raising the bar, always being the example. I personally uh, really do set some high goals. I'm going to have a look at my goals with you in a minute, just what I do on a personal level. But, you know, if always striving to be better um, personally every month. And really, I like to share with my team as well uh, what 
I'm going to aim for in that month on my PQV, on my personal sponsoring, you know, um, what, what exactly what I'm going to do. I like to hold myself accountable to my team and I share it onto our page. And then those who are brave enough will put theirs underneath and we get a thread going on. So set goals that exceed your current abilities is a massive tip there so you know really go all out i know we like to set big scary goals and things like that but really do set them that exceed your current abilities and because and like i heard from ian vp ian pritchard recently when you get to a place where you just don't want to stretch you've made it all about you and sometimes we do feel like oh, really i'm exhausted i can't be bothered you know, that's it. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to have a, you know, I'm going to take my foot off a little bit. I've heard myself say it, but don't do that because that is like me, me, me. And we can't have that when we're going on for area and region. You know, it's all about everybody else and looking after our team. So let your team see you stretching every month, regardless, working on that personal business consistently, having that work ethic that they're just like, wow, I need to step up and I need to be doing that because I want a bit of what she's got. you know. So really get into that mode. Don't be afraid to give up the good to get the great and spend your time with the right people. So relating right back again to what I was just talking about, my lifestyle was just no good. Um, you know, the things I was doing, the people I was hanging around with some of the time, you know, the people I was listening to, taking advice from, you know, even up to area manager level. I actually got into a relationship with a guy at area manager level. It was like taking 10 steps back. It was just, it was a lesson that I needed to learn, but it was one of these that cost me 18 months of my life with the wrong person, like, you know, trying to take away my soul. And I, I let it, I let him do that for, for as, as long as, as long as he did. And, you know, that's fine because I've learned from it. But at that point, if I'd have done the personal development and done a bit of work on myself when everyone was screaming at me to do it, um, that possibly might not have come into my life. But I do believe things do for a reason, and I did learn from it. But just be careful who you're spending your time with and always be giving that advice to your team as well. We all know about the personal development daily and the mindset of my team will get me there. Uh, you know, that has got to go. Like I say, that personal business, you have to be working monthly and, and daily and, and just getting it, tweaking it better every single time. And the, the reason for that is the reason why we need to lose the mindset of my team will get me there is because you remember your team, uh, uh, new ICs, ICs are established, people going on for DM qual and, and getting up to DM, they just don't believe in themselves yet. So you have to really love them where they're at and let them see you as the example because they're at that stage where they need to start working on themselves and, and continue working on themselves, but they're watching you for that. So it makes you everything you're doing is serving you because you want that to spill into your team. Be willing to do whatever it takes and always look at yourself and think, would I follow me? because I have to do that and I do do that on a consistent basis I look at myself and I think right you know would I do you know would I follow me and really be getting better every single day through everything that's advised in in your teams and, and in our bomb so earn every single bonus so that's my goals area bonus district bonus so even though I'm a regional vice president, that is on my list. That is my next goal is to be smashing that bonus every single month. But two that I never, ever let slip and I haven't let slip for a long, long time are the district and the area bonuses. I think when I first, I did track this a while back, but when I went district manager at first, I didn't get my bonus for a little while, possibly, I don't know, five, six months or something. And then I got it. And I'll be honest with you now, I've probably missed three, but that was many years ago. So this is something that by getting myself into big personal activity, I've never, ever missed this. So I want you all to make sure that you're doing this because this is the foundation of your business is, is your DM bonus. Casting the vision to your team that it, it is possible, that it, it can be done and just let them see that so as you are 100%, uh, so as they're all going to follow on and do that with you. We have to get right out of the maintenance mindset. 
and I speak to you know a lot of my team are really stepping up now and getting into their their DM bonus and it's it's fantastic. But it hasn't always been the case because such a lot of of uh, people are into like this maintenance mindset. Oh well, I'll, I'll be this and I'll leave it till then and I'll do it then. And whoa, we need to really get out in the start of the month. Even I think I've said yes, yeah, start at the end of the previous month. You'll see in my picture here, the 40 faces document, and I've spoke to some of you about it at the um, retreat, but also on other trainings that I've done. This is a document that I can send, or Danny's probably got it somewhere. Fill it out every day. Make sure that you're speaking to people. You want to get in front of 30 or to 40 people every single month. So as you can step up and you can be getting that bonus um, every month. And this 40 faces will keep you on track for it. There's no way you're going to do the maintenance mindset when you're filling in that many people every single month. So plan how you're going to do it every month and really break it down into chunks. I know with uh, Danny and I have been doing some coaching with Jerry and she's probably, you will have done your chunking down training and it'll be there for your team to use, won't it? I know I've got mine out on YouTube, but break it down into those chunks. So like every week, so if, you, if you're going for your, um, your, your 5,000, and you want to be break, oh, sorry, your, your 10,000, you know, break it down into the two and a half thousand every single week. Um, and really then how are you going to achieve that? And, you know, it's such a, a great thing is to be, to be breaking it down and we should all be doing that because it can look scary seeing these big numbers. Have your plan in place. Personally, every single month I strive to do my bonus by myself because I won't rely on my team for it. I know that I want to get that at that bonus it is mine every single month and I don't always get my 5,000 and my five new but there are times when I do achieve it and I, I achieve higher than that but you know on average lately I've been getting really sort of like between three to four and a half thousand so I'm kind of edging back up for it now and this is all personal and um, so five thousand and five new Go for it personally, put it on your board and, and put it out there and fill in your 40 faces and be meeting more people than what you're meeting now and offering the ASVPs more than what you are now and getting more PCs on board every single month. You know, it's, I, I generally do get my five new every single month and it's all from using that 40 faces and meeting new people every month and getting referrals from other people as well is massive. So I always tend to, like I've put their start at the end of the previous month. So I'm always really gearing up meetings and gold bag drops and sample drops right at the end of, of the month. I never, I never stop because when you do start to stop and then you've got to start again, as we know, half the month's gone when you start to do your follow-ups. So really get it in at the end of the previous. But please, everything I'm talking about here is what I want you to sort of, you know, duplicate within your team. So not just yourself. Some of you have been doing it already, but make sure your team are doing it. And, you know, this is going to be available to give to them as well, this, this training, I'm sure. Teach the 1,000 PQV to your team. So I'm going to just show you on my next one here. Um, incentivize. If it's going to move. Incentivize and recognize. So within our teams, myself and Teresa, Teresa came up with this fantastic incentive idea 33 months ago it was now because I know I'm up to my 33rd month so she calls it the thousand elite and what we do is um, we have to achieve a thousand PQV every month and every third month of doing it Teresa gifts us so even when I went region I said to Teresa do you want me to take over my region now and, and I'll do the thousand elite and she was like no no I'm going to keep doing it um, so that was, I was really, really grateful to her. And we all are. It's such a great incentive. Um, but it keeps everybody on track. So when you get a new consultant coming into your team, teach them to do a thousand personal every month and incentivize it. So because Teresa was kind of going to carry on with hers, I decided that I was going to put one in for me. So I was going to incentivize uh, everybody within my central district to do a thousand personal every month, but also one sign up with the 150 minimum. So I've found that has been a really good incentive to hammer out too, because they're already looking at doing the thousand for Teresa's incentive. So they're going to do that, but it's actually getting them to do that, that one sign up as well, which is key, especially for you DMs and AMs and everybody out there looking at your, your bonuses. It's going to bring in a consistent amount of new signups every month as well. 
So for that, I we, we generally, if it's local local guys, um, we we get up, we get together, and we do happy hour. So I actually recommended that all the district managers within my region do this incentive. So that is giving them leadership in itself, isn't it? So so maybe you guys want to put something like that together as well. So you're the district, you're stepping up to leadership, and you're offering like maybe a gift. It doesn't have to be happy hour something along those lines and really that is um like i say it's, it's for my district managers to gift their central and i gift my central and it just all helps with those your, your, your leadership as a district um i do 2500 pqv incentive so this is for my entire region and because it's 2500 i generally do a 25 pound voucher for somewhere quite flashy near to them that they can take and have a meal with the partner or something like that. That's what I do from a whole region. And then, like you guys, I'll do, I, I do top central district, top sponsoring, top PQV. And these are things that you might want to look at more as you're getting up to, to region. Um, or it might be something that you want to start to gift now. So if you're not already, take a look at um, and be, um, what's the word? What's the word when you've got a flair and you can think of things? Be, be different. Be, oh, I don't know. I don't know where the word's gone. But really, just have a little think about some different things that you can offer um, as your incentives because Arbonne is all about recognition and that's the thing that keeps a lot of people in this business, the recognition and the friendships and you know the incentives and the social side of it. I've got people within my central district who just, they're not ready for popping out yet. They just absolutely love um, coming on the, the happy hours every month or perhaps an afternoon tea or, or something like that. So, you know, yes, unique. Thank you very much, Sarah. That's exactly what I meant. Um, so, yeah, recognize for all the incentives and share them on the team pages as well. So I know you'll have your, your region pages and, and possibly area pages as well. I know I kind of started off having my own page when I was an area manager and Cresta, who's just gone area in my team she's got one and she doesn't really post a great lot on there because we have the region page and also our nation page but it is nice to have that bit that you can throw out your own incentives and things on too so get into that that's really good people love that and just to kind of finish off I think this is my last one now is some top leadership traits so great things I've learned over the years is um, you know find the pioneers in your business identify your key players and really pour belief into them. Always remember that, you know, you've worked on yourself to a degree and, and other people are coming into your business without having done any of that. So you really want to be pouring belief and, you know, you can do this, you're great. And, you know, really working on their, their self-worth with them from the start and, and letting them know those qualities that you can see in them that they might not see themselves just yet. Create the momentum. It does start with you. You know, we can go to all of our big trainings and leadership academies and AACs, but these people are joining your business for you. So, you know, it, it starts with you. So you create that momentum about the way we've just talked about through this slideshow and really get people going with what you're doing. Um, you know, you're the one that they're watching and, and mirroring. Really be a coach, not don't manage people. So, you know, really be out there coaching and inspiring and leading from the front. Um, that whole managing thing can just get a bit sticky and a bit tricky and people don't want to be managed. They get enough of that at work. And there's some amazing trainings on how to really, uh, you know, work away from the managing and getting into the coaching. So that that would be a good one to cover one night. But really just step away from that management. Uh, be a vision caster. So really look and be clear about where you're going. And, you know, like we hear quite often when we go to trainings, you know, your team reflects what your vision is right now. So what is your vision? And and what are you casting out there? Do, do your team know what your purpose is? Uh, you know, and I, I think I've put it in here somewhere as well. When you get your purpose 100% right, the your purpose why you're actually doing this then your why will come and it will follow so really spread that out there and get everybody on your team doing the same thing and really defining their purpose and I'm going to use Fiona's stake in the ground this is what's this is what's happening and this is what I'm doing and you know these are the reasons why I'm doing it and then 
all the other stuff, your wife, your family, and all the other things you put out there will, will come. So our team follow our actions, not our words. So again, it's all about being that person who's doing the do, isn't it? You know, it's all great to, um, to, to sort of look at others and, and to look at other people's journeys and to really compare. But it's, you know, we're the ones, it's, it's our actions that our team will follow because we, we and you are their leader. When there's things going on in your team and she said this, she said that, and oh, look at this, look at that, just don't get caught up in it because I have, I have done myself and it just is exhausting. So don't get caught up in it and the person who is doing it, just advise them of the same and let's just all step up and just join forces and, and go together on this because it is for some and it isn't for others. And, you know, rather than anything get started off that she said this, she said that, Let's just leave it at that and let's just carry on with what we need to do. Make a living by making a difference. So look at whose lives you can change with this and who you can help with this and, you know, really start to look at it in that way. And like I say, coach your teams to do the same. Making a difference in other people's lives is 100% about what this business is. I just didn't see that in the beginning. And, you know, it's another reason why I was stuck. I was so caught up in the fact that I wanted an extra £200 a month to pay off some debts that I'd been, I'd accrued when I'd been traveling. You know, I couldn't see any further. But really look at this properly for the multi-million pound business that it is is a difference maker and a life changer put yourself in other situations have empathy for people you know you're going to come across so many people on your journey and the the big changes in your business and and you know in your life are the people who you haven't yet met and I really think that we you know you want to connect with so many people but you need to do that by um having empathy and really putting yourself in other people's situations and you know realizing that you can't talk to her like he talked to this 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 girl. She, you know, has different things going on, and you know, it's all about really, really being just just a great person, the best version of you with people, and always being nice and, and happy. Invest in yourself, you know, put, like the coaching Danny and I are are, um, are on with Jerry. You know, I think it's one of the best investments I've ever made. Um, really when you get offered some kind of coaching like that have a think not about how much it's going to cost you but you know what it's going to do for you and your business and for your family and everything really do do some investigating about different coach, coaching that can um, help you because there's so many coaches out there uh, you know really do in, invest at some stage in yourself and be super disciplined I love the way Scott Campbell says discipline is sexy in his way that he does, uh, because it is, you know, we have to be disciplined and really like over disciplined I've put there, because I think that that is the massive thing in this. Once I got disciplined with my personal development, you know, I really can't get out of it now. I've just, I've had Eden, it's 15 days in and I'm still doing the miracle morning, but I'm doing it through different stages of the day. <laughs> It all depends when she sleeps, but she is a very good sleeper. But I'm so disciplined with my personal development that I am reading, you know, 30 minutes at least a day. I've now just started a book called Will It Make the Boat Go Faster? And this is, um, I mean, I'm just really starting it now, but I would recommend it. It's, it's fab. It's this one here. Will It Make the Boat Go Faster? And it's for everyone who wants to raise their game in business, in sport and the, the game of life. So it's a little bit veering away from some of the stuff that we are recommended. It's Sebastian Coe. Um, it's about the, the Olympic um, medalists. So obviously we know what they have to put their mind to and years worth of training just for one race that they might not win. You know, so it's, it's going to be a really good one that. But being disciplined with all of this, even with Eden around, I've made sure that I've not let anything slip because what this has brought into my life and, and it's, it's created for the life that Eden's going to have, you know, it's, it's just incredible. And I, I don't, I wouldn't ever want to let that slip. And I want people to see that even with all that going on and all other stuff going on and, you know, it's, it still is possible. So be that example. And that is the best way ever of being a top, top leader. So really, they're my tips, and that's everything I've got for you. Hope hope it's touched you and that you can take something from it, guys. 
Emma, that was absolutely top quality. Like you were saying about investing time and money into trainings, and you're absolutely right. Like we invest time and money into Jerry's trainings. And although you've done this for free for us all tonight, we have all invested an hour's worth of our time for that. And that was an hour well spent. That was absolutely unbelievably good. You are just amazing. You are one of a kind, unique, incredible. You really are. Oh, thank you. It was an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I loved it. Great. Any, any time, any questions? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. See, you're a pro. Has anyone got a question? <laughs> if you do, just unmute yourself. I have a question. Yes. Um, yes. Is it me? Is it... I can't, I can't see the big screen right now. I can only see Emma, okay. but... The, yeah thanks Emma. okay so you are a regional vice president and by the way that was incredible trading that that's one of the best i've ever ever heard um emma seriously in nine years that was awesome um could you do that all over again like on a bigger <laughs> stage because i think many more people will benefit from that um so you've gone through district and i know how hard you work girlfriend you are you're a pack horse you work uh, there's no doubt about that, Emma. Um, so do you remember, was there a defining moment going district, area and region? You know, was there a shift? What was it? Can you, what, you know, you know, you say about raising your vibration and I loved you saying being yourself and being authentic because I think that's, that's the truth. And thank you for being humble and telling us about your drinking and, and all of that. You know, that's, that's really honestly, because it is, it's, it's a truth, right? And we're not maybe proud of it, but people should know about it. Um, because you're showing up as you. So was there a shift every time you went district, area, region, was there a shift in you and all your team or a harm moment or, or what was the difference every time you went to that next level of leadership? Yeah, yeah, it really was. The first shift, like I mentioned for you, was when I was district going area. So like I say, it was the whole personal development thing I hadn't embraced it fully. I just really was tinkering on with bits and bobs and obviously attending things is always massive. Um, so I, I was always doing that. But it was it was taking on board um, the reading that people were, were taught. I just wasn't doing any and I wasn't doing any of like the, the learn and burns and things. So for me, it was hearing about other people's experience within Arbonne, but on a daily basis, whereas I was only hearing and doing it when I was in a word, having to go to events. So for me, it was getting out of that mindset of the having to and that absolutely, you know, this is 100% realising, probably realising, right, you know, this is, you, you want your team, like I put in my notes, don't expect them to do what you're not doing. And that's what it was. There was a lot of talk about this development, but I wasn't doing it. So the shift was starting to do it. And then the, the team followed. And then we were area and then we were bonusing area within a short space of time so um so yeah that was that was another shift and then the shift going from area to region was exactly what we've just been talking about it was leadership it was you know in in a way moving away from just being everything what you know Teresa in a way um it was like I had to act like I was a region myself because Teresa had been the region for so long and you know she's incredible she's amazing she's taught me so much in this business and I, I just a hundred percent you know always be grateful but I needed to start doing some of that myself you know I needed to start doing my own zoom calls once a week which we still do and you know the fantastic and like this I needed to get into that I wasn't in, doing any of that um getting my own facebook group page as an area um once I started doing that and showing the leadership skills and working more on leadership skills as well as mindset and belief all at the same time, you know, doing a, a book on mindset and a, a, an audio on leadership, that's when we went region. Um, and, and like I say, changing, curbing my lifestyle because it, it was, it was getting to a point where I'm, I was fine Monday to Friday, but I w it got to a weekend and because all my friends were out partying and, and living it up, I still, even though I knew I had to pull back from it, I, I just, I wasn't, I could let myself get caught up in a full weekend of it and then that would be two or three days shot off. So, so yeah, so implementing leadership 
has, has been great. And now I'm seeing my team do it, which is phenomenal. So, and that's what we all want. Thank you, darling. Okay, you're welcome. Stacey, were you gonna say something? I saw you on mute. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say, in regards to setting the um, incentives, I've got a few girls that have just sort of restarted their business again. Um, but for one of them, I think a, a fact, she really wants to get moving, but she's really holding back. Um, she's not doing the activity, it's a problem. Should I still set the 1,000 PQV and one sign up? Or should I do it slightly lower? Well, you know, it's something we talked about and uh, I, I personally think that the 1,000 definitely yeah. I've had um, other people like set in, you know, like I said, DMs, do you, do you, um, just one. Um, we're doing 500. Okay. So it's, it's it's up to you, um, but I've always kept mine to the the thousand. Yeah. I think it's something to. I always say to people when they join as well. I always make sure I say so on the region page. You're going to see towards the end of the month lots of recognition, lots of notifications, lots of people doing this and that. This is what I'm going to coach you to build to. So you know you're going to do the same. So always lay it out there that this is something that we expect to be straight away. But if you're going to do it straight away, this is the kind of activity that you're going to be doing. And, you know, for me, it's at least three bags or three samples of out there. One um, presentation, like party a week. Uh, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. You might have two the following. You need to get four a month in, definitely. Um, we'll get them those numbers. And obviously, as they get more into the business, the following up, every month I do a month end uh, text blast. And usually get you know between a few hundred to a couple of thousand QV from that, and so so really coaching them how they can do it is is key. But the, the, to build up to it. Okay, so because the couple of girls that um, were really quiet were going for it, one in particular, they then made friends, and what happened was is they felt that I wanted their success for myself, which wasn't the case. I generally wanted it for them, you know, because I could see how well they were doing. And then they just pulled back and dropped out. And I was like, I don't really understand what went wrong here. And obviously yeah. they've come back on now, realizing that that wasn't my motive. Um, yeah. But I still think they're a little bit... So I don't really understand where I went wrong. Yeah, I think that it's, it's nothing against you. It's they just haven't got the culture of, of Arbonne yet. And they haven't been to enough trainings yet. And, you know, how did you, you meet them? Obviously, you don't, you didn't know these girls... Um, just, I knew them a little bit, but not really. Yeah, yeah. They, they've probably seen it. I think sometimes with other companies, there's so much of that goes on. You know, it's like sign, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, and no coaching and no, you know, once they actually see the caliber of what we've got here, people yeah. do change. But we have to, there's so much, isn't there? And you don't want to overwhelm people at first with everything. Yeah. I know exactly. And, but sometimes we just need to like sit down with them and say, look, this is what you're going to see. Don't get overwhelmed with it. Really paint the picture about what's, especially when someone signs up near the end of the month. You know, I've had people join up at the end of the month and they're like, oh my God, what's going on? These two pages, everything's going crazy. I can't keep up. And it's like, but you don't need to, don't worry. I'm going to do this step by step with you. So really, you know, like I said, paint that vision with people before they get overwhelmed like I say, getting them into the culture of Arbon and, and why we do these things is is key, really. Because I asked them, sorry to take over the Zoom, I've just got a few more, uh, one more question. I just, um, so basically I asked, they said they wanted to start again. I said, great, went through the four questions. They said, said they were coachable and I said what coachable meant in regards to getting onto Sunday night trainings. And then one, and then so I sent the message out, oh, so trains on tonight, great, who's jumping on? Oh, I'm not feeling particularly well today. Oh, I'm out for tonight. I'm out with a special lady. And I'm like, you just said to me this week, you're coachable. I don't get it. Mm, yeah, I know. And you will get that. It's just the proving that they're, they're not coachable at this precise yeah. moment in time. So you just realizing that some will, some won't. Yeah. And just keep finding people until they're ready yeah. to. I've had people join me, and I was like that. You know, I was like that. Um, you know, you couldn't tell me to do personal development because I was fine. 
you know, but all this other stuff was going on, which clearly highlighted that I wasn't. Uh, so understand that people really are there. Uh, but we've got such a high caliber of this uh, personal development in Arbon. We know that, but they don't when they first come in. So it's just been taken to people. And uh, if it's just something that they're not willing to do just yet, then that's fine. They'll come back as it is for them. And you have to have that. You have to have. You have to adopt that kind of mentally. Really, you have to know that some will, some won't, regardless of what they say. Yeah, okay. so true. Thank you. The best, the best thing that I think yeah, anybody can do is just sponsor more people because it makes you less frustrated with what some people are what saying what they want and not actually matching up to doing what they need to do to get what they want. So the more people you sponsor, the more you're just like, okay, that's fine. You're not on team training, no problem. Just focus on the people that do want it. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay, so I'll bring this call it. to an end because um, I know many of us have got to get onto our um, central district <coughs> training now emma thank you so much for your time as i said and like what fiona said and i echo everything in the chat that hour of your time was a massively great investment for all of us so please do know that that was absolutely incredible fiona's right it is a training that you need to keep a hold of because i believe that you will be training on the aac stage next year you are absolutely beautiful and phenomenal and incredibly amazing thank you so much for your time emma Oh, you're welcome, Danny. 100% really enjoyed it. And any time, just give me a shout. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.